the whispers of secret gates to another world are growing stronger. Now, while no one knows who is building them, you have this dreadful hunch. Could you be the hidden architect of the Gates of Delirium? Thank you for joining me today at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Kevin Delp. The Gates of Delirium is a two to four player set collection area majority game that takes about 45 minutes to play. It's designed by Jordan Demandy, and this is published by Renegade Game Studios, and they sent us this copy to review. You'll place the game board out on the table with the action cards, gate cards, scroll cards, monstrosity discs, and tokens. Players receive a journal, score marker, and 10 investigators. They'll receive a starting hand of five action cards. The start player gets the sanity disc. Here's a super quick overview of the game. Each player has a hand of action cards and the cards have a sane side and an insane side. It's up to the start player of each round to decide if it's gonna be a sane round where you're gonna play the sane actions or an insane round where you play the insane actions. Now the game will continue until the final monstrosity is released through an open gate, the game is over then, and you'll count up points. During sane rounds, players will be collecting lost pages, collecting map fragments, and placing their investigators out on the game board. For insane actions, you could collect ancient runes, build gate sections, and convert investigators. All of these will be getting you points, which I'll explain a little later. Once a gate is complete, the game is paused. The player gains the top monstrosity and places it on the gate, and gains the point shown. If the monstrosity shows a scroll icon, then reveal a scroll. These affect how the game is played from that point forward. Then look at the part of the game board that corresponds to the open gate. Players will be earning points based on their investigators there. The most, second most, and third most. Then all investigators in that region are returned to the players. There are also desperation tokens that will be gained during the game that can let you take free actions as listed in the rulebook. After each round, the sanity disc is passed to the next player who then decides the fate of that round, whether sane or insane, and the game will continue until the final monstrosity is revealed, and then you'll count up end game points. A point for each investigator left on the map. If any revealed scroll cards, they'll give players points. Points for Ancient Runes, Consecutive Lost Pages give 4 points each and Non-Consecutive give 2. A Complete Map is worth 12 points, any Extra Fragments are worth 2 points each. And the player with the most points wins. This is another Lovecraftian type game and I've played a number of these types of games like Mansions of Madness, Elder Sign, Arkham Horror, Elder Tour, and more. And I would say a lot of those games are co-op games. Well, this one's different with players competing against each other. I think the unique thing in the game is the way each round could be sane or insane. That could really help or hurt you depending on what cards you have or what you're trying to accomplish. Now, there are changes to setup and gameplay for a two-player game, like uh, having neutral investigators, but it plays pretty similarly. I like how the gates are created. It looks like a vortex is opening up. Each color gate has a different number of cards in the deck, so you may want to go after certain colors depending on the probabilities. I think the theme really comes through with that sane or insane each round, and you also are trying to find fragments, which I think lends to the theme, and then of course, building the gates. And lots of replayability with all the different ways you can score points in the game. I even heard from the designers that there's a hidden puzzle somewhere in the game, so maybe you can look for that and try and solve it, and if you do, let me know in the comments below. I like the art style in the game from the board to the cards. It's cool that the player scoring markers are different shapes too. I enjoy playing Gates of Delirium from Renegade Game Studios. I really like the dual use cards with it being sane or insane each round and how you have to use them. I think there's some really good choices you have to make uh, during the game with those decisions. So if you like Lovecraftian type games, you like set collection or area majority, then definitely check out 
Gates of Delirium from Renegade Games. And as always, we would love for you to subscribe to Tantrum House and check out more videos coming soon.